And one of the things that really differentiates Rood is just how many revolutions he can get on the ball. His spin rate is around 3,250. That's compared to the ATP average of 2,580. These stats were taken at the US Open in 2022 when Rude was admittedly closer to the top of the game and his forehand average speed was around 80 miles an hour compared to the rest of the men's field which was around 76 miles an hour. So definitely a forehand I think we can all try to learn from. So let's watch it together really quickly and then we'll get started. Here we go. All right, so there is a great bounce overhead at the end, but I think we'll save that for another video. And we'll just cover what makes his forehand really such a great weapon. Let's watch how he moves his racket. So he's got a pretty strong ready position here. All he's going to do is basically make a unit turn where his shoulders turn. And this is something that if you are struggling with making a unit turn, look at what your right foot does on your forehand unit turn sometimes i'm working with a player and they're struggling with the unit turn and inevitably one of the issues that they have is they're trying to turn their shoulders but if you don't turn the toe you can't turn the knee and you can't turn the hips so make sure that you turn or pivot that right foot for your forehand unit turn what does it mean to take the racket head high low high it's pretty self-explanatory really from the ready position you should just make a unit turn now Rude takes his hand a little bit higher just so he can get the racket really free falling here and Vic Braden I believe coined this term gravity assisted racket speed so you want to take the racket head high so that you can just let it fall into the slot here and then you swing high again look at where his hand finishes. His hand finishes almost by his head. And why am I pointing that out? Because sometimes you'll hear instruction to not finish the hand really high. And granted, this is a heavier ball where he's really putting a lot of revolutions on it. He's putting a lot of trajectory on it, which is why the hand finishes high but that's a smart shot because of where he is in the court. Look how far back he is. Because he's so far back, he's really elevating that ball nice and high. Okay, so that's what a high-low high swing is. So from the ready position, you just want to take that racket head high here, and then you're just going to let it fall into the slot position with your hand by your pocket and then it's going to go high again with your hand finishing high so that's really one of the main fundamentals for having an efficient stroke is that usually they go high low high the next part i want to cover is inside out so sometimes there's some confusion with this term Inside out just basically means the racket has to move from close to the body to away. And one of the ways we can tell is how close does the hand get to the body. So if you look at his hand, notice that it comes right into basically his pocket or in the slot. And this is what allows him to swing the racket outwards into the contact so it's this motion here obviously the racket head is falling he's using gravity assisted racket speed from Vic Braden but it's from this hand being close that's what gives him the space to move the racket away into the contact this is another checkpoint you can film yourself to see where your hand is getting sometimes you see players they set their hand a little too far away from their body. There's a few things going on, obviously, with his forehand that he does extremely well. His separation, so, you know, it's referred to as a separation angle. 
So that's the line through his hips. So notice how his shoulders are turned more than his hips. So if we were looking from the top downwards, he would really have what we call an X angle where you would see an X between his hips and his shoulders. All of this, obviously he pushes from the ground, then the legs turn, then the hip starts to turn, and then the shoulders bring the racket finally into the contact. But that's what an inside out swing means. The hand has to move from close to the body to away and out, okay? Now, the next part is strings hooded. Now we can tell from the grip that Rude has got, it's, I would say it's fairly extreme. He's riding between, essentially he's at a full Western here. However, what Rude does really well is, just staying a little bit on the inside out concept, is he really swings the hand away from the body. I'll work with players, mostly juniors, who have extreme grips. And what they do is they don't swing inside out enough and their hand comes closer to here. It almost looks like their hand is about to hit their ear. You can have an extreme grip, but it's not something that I would personally recommend. But you need to be able to swing inside out to really use that grip. Okay, back to what we are talking about. I know I just went backwards a little bit in the concepts. This is a pretty big thing. If you can have your palm facing downwards, as it is here, where the strings are facing downwards, then all you have to do is move the hand away and you can get the racket face vertical at the hit. Now, I want to be very clear here. You shouldn't be forcing or really holding a lot of tension while you're trying to get your racket face into this position. If you have anywhere from an Eastern onwards, you'll get that racket face closed if everything is nice and relaxed and the hand falls into that slot position. Why do we recommend the strings being hooded at the bottom of the swing? Just so you can swing freely and get the racket face vertical at the hit. If you had your racket, let's say on edge. So on edge just means if it was up and down this way. You have to make a timing calculation to get your racket face vertical at the hit. And yes, maybe you can do it when you're hitting at a really easy pace, but as the ball starts to come faster, as you want to increase your racket speed, that calculation becomes tougher and tougher. I would really say this is a pretty common issue I see with players that I work with, is that they set their racket on edge as opposed to having their strings hooded here. And the last part I want to cover is just what a hitting zone is. So efficient strokes need long hitting zones. A hitting zone is just the amount of time that the strings face the target in the stroke. The longer the strings face the target, the more efficient your stroke because your brain has less calculations to get the racket into the right place for where you want to send that ball. So what we see here is the frame before and even the frame after, essentially rude strings will face outwards to the target. I know when you watch pros swinging really fast, it might look like they're really folding their racket across their body, but there is extension out towards the target and the hand reaches a limit. And then yes, of course it comes across the body. I'll never argue that it won't, but what you want to try and emulate is to feel as if the strings track out towards the target when you are hitting your forehand. You want to have a long hitting zone so you can send that ball consistently towards your target. Okay, so try to avoid folding across your body. It should be more of a inside out lift away and upwards. Lastly, what I want to cover now is just the role of trunk rotation in the forehand. So we touched on this a little bit. So Rude has great separation. So 
If we look at his shoulders, they're turned more than his hips. And as that racket starts to fall, he's going to push against the ground. And studies show that trunk rotation is really one of the most important things for generating velocity on the forehand. Yet, one of the things I see at the club and recreational level is players trying to spin around and over rotate because they get some kind of understanding of firing the hips or turning their trunk around really fast. It's important, but you need to understand how it actually works. So that push is initiated from the ground. You use ground reaction forces to essentially unwind the body segments into the contact. So his shoulders are turned more than his hips. He's going to push against the ground and he's going to lift. So tennis is a lifting game. You often hear the cue stay down. That's really not what happens at a higher and higher level. If you want to hit the ball well, you will use the legs to really maximize how fast your trunk turns. And really a, a very simple way of showing players this is just to put a line here and you can see when Root is really using the ground to turn that trunk forward into the contact, look at how much he's lifted. That is probably, I would say, a foot and a half. So don't feel like you have to stay down. You'll just end up spinning around with your trunk. And the last part I want to cover is look at his left hand, okay? So we'll notice if we set this box here, his left hand or arm, excuse me, will act essentially as a reactive brake. So all of that energy will be transferring up and out through his body, but the player will slow down the left side of their body if they're right-handed to really get the arm moving fastest into the contact. One of the issues I see with players is that they don't stop their non-hitting side and they spin this arm all the way around and they'll just end up over rotating at the hit. Look at how still the left side of his body is compared to the right side. So there you go everyone, hope you found it helpful. If you want a stroke analysis like this where we'll put you side by side with Casper Rude and compare your forehand, just check out the link in my description. There's also a free tennis consult in there for you if you feel you need help with your game. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you all soon.